Thank you for joining us on the Heidi and Frank Show. It's Thursday morning, October 8th. I'm uh, going to play some Biggest Loser, but I forgot. My buddies, the Schmoes, are in the Bristol Farms green room telling us about what's coming up in theaters. So let's cover that first, but we will get to Biggest Loser right after that for those not scary farm tickets. What's up, fellas? Good to see you. What's going on? Hey, everyone. Yes, the Malort Challenge didn't go well for it. Well, it actually went well for the guru. He didn't have to do any of it. No. Yeah. Lucked out. Mm-hmm. If, if, if there's Van Halen tickets on the table again this week, I'm happy to drink <laughs> yeah. a bottle of it. So how was it? It was awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah it. it was a great birthday weekend. Uh, it was awesome. Heidi and uh, Eric got to see that they came out on, um, on yeah, the I, birthday. I know. I didn't make it. No, it's all right. And I was then, at the UCLA game, and I didn't realize it was at 4.30 in the afternoon, so by, by the time I got out of there, I was, was like, like eh. yeah. I'll be, I, and as happy as I was to see Heidi walk around the corner into the bar, and I, I was looking around, and I was like, what, is Frank? It's oh, yeah. it's no, like, oh, no, it's just me. Okay. Deal with it. <laughs> and she's and she's in sober tober, so she was fun. <laughs> she was fun, and um, fun. and then we went. To Some Van, other people weren't though. No, it's true. <laughs> Van Halen true. on uh, Sunday night, and it was amazing. It was really cool. Thank you for that. It was it was amazing. It's amazing. That set list was, it was like the set list that I could have drawn up and then emailed to Eddie, like, can you play these right. songs? And, and it was solo, perfect. man. Oh, you did a solo. It was out of control. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Yeah, uh, yeah, they they really dressed up too. I saw some footage where it's like they're just like in jeans and t-shirts. Well, the other guys, it's kind of like Dave is almost like, "Hey guys, don't outdo me because I'm going to wear 19 right. different costumes. So if you guys could just look like you're, you know, hanging drywall or something, that'd be fantastic." <laughs> he was doing stand up for the most part. He was hilarious. Dave, yeah. It might be the best Dave banter. I've seen him three times on three different tours. It might have been the best Dave banter I've ever he seen. He could have been at Christian's birthday party. There was a lot of stand up there, and this is what I learned from Christian's birthday party. He has an enormous penis. Really? <laughs> I, Everybody was talking about the size of his penis. Everybody. Is that true? He, I don't yes, remember he has, that He part has of a the large show. penis. That's that's all anybody was talking about. I what, was like, what were they talking about specifically? How large his penis is. <laughs> but how is this even in conversation? <laughs> Did you know that Christian has an enormous penis? <laughs> and, and, and I was like, I could sense that. Like, I get that. And was that. it pass it on? Because you said everybody was talking everybody about it. Everybody was talking about it. And then it was like, you know, his wife is with him. Like, she wasn't going to be with him because he's a comedian. He's not, he's like, okay looking. But he has an enormous <laughs> penis. And his wife's like, that's, yes. And I'm like, what is happening right is, now? Wow. Look yeah. at you, man. Hey, give me one of those shots, that's, please. That's what <laughs> Okay, that's easy. The guy's that's birthday was last oh, week. That's okay. true. That's yeah. true. That's Save true. the compliment. He's back to having a mediocre penis. Uh-huh. Uh, now it's time to Don't find out what you out. thought about what happens in theaters this week. Uh, we got Pan opening up, Knock Knock, and Steve Jobs. And so Pan is the Peter Pan movie. Speaking of How huge penises, times? yeah. I mean, How many more times are we going to make this movie? I was dreading seeing this movie to the point where I actually, because Christian's birthday was on a Saturday night, and the Pan screening fell on a Sunday morning. And so old Mark Ellis didn't quite get out of bed in time to go check out Pan. But Christian saw it, and I hear you loved it. Oh, man. I was so excited. I actually was really excited for this movie because it had like an epic feel. It could be a, an interesting take to the origin of Pan. It stinks. Oh. Yeah. yeah, you know, you know, thirty-eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It li- they literally break out into <laughs> Hugh Jackman as Blackbeard breaks out into "Smells Like Teen Spirit." He starts. They start singing it. Yes, everyone has this look on their face, like who like farted? we just drank Malort. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's and it's like you know what Baz Luhrmann does. Like he did it in Moulin Rouge, and he did it in uh, Great Gatsby, yeah. where the modern. Music, but it was consistent throughout the whole movie. They do uh, Teen Spirit and Blitzkrieg Bop in this, and then it goes away. You never see it ever. It, it's so pointless. I have to blame that weird. The, Joe Wright, who directed this. The performances were fine, but Joe Wright's style did not work. It was a bad. Bad take for this movie, and Garrett Hedlund talking, and every once in a while he's talking like this. And come on, Pen, we've got to find the boat. It's like, who are you? It's like <laughs> he's like Daniel Day Lewis in the movie Blood meets Jack Nicholson. It's like, hey, it's your old friend uh, Hook here. And it's like, calm it down. <laughs> And so it's Hook, but he's like buddies with Pan, right? In the movie. So Blackbeard's the enemy. Hook's not the bad guy in this one. You got Hook, and he kind of teams up with Peter Pan. Yeah, and the movie just has no idea who it's supposed to be for, like aimed towards. Like kids are going to be scared at some of the stuff, adults are going to be bored out of their minds. It's just a bad movie. Mm. Uh, Okay. Skip that one. Oh, for one. (laughs) Yeah, I love that. (laughs) <laughs> uh, so obviously, we're going to get back on the plus side with a Keanu Reeves flick. Uh, knock, oh, knock. Oh. Uh, when a devoted husband and father is left home alone for the weekend, two stranded young women unexpectedly knock on his door for help. What starts out as kind of a gesture, uh, a kind gesture, results in dangerous seduction and a deadly game of cat and mouse. Here's why we love this film. 
Oh, we boy. both missed the screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a rough week for the schmoes. Yeah, yeah. it actually is uh, 36% yeah, of Rotten Tomatoes. Worse than Pan. Yeah, we missed it. We missed it. Uh, we were supposed mm. to see it yesterday. We got tied up with We were trying stuff. to go in, and Christian's penis got caught in the door. <laughs> so we had, we had yeah. to take it to the emergency Something room. Something that rhymes with knock, knock. Yeah, seriously. Right? That's what I was trying to do. I was trying to knock on the door. Yeah. The penis. <laughs> <laughs> Broke the door. Yeah. <laughs> So let's get to the movie that actually people are, are liking. 93% on Rotten Tomatoes. Steve Jobs, starring Michael Fassbender as Steve Jobs, Kate Winslet, and Seth Rogen. I was a huge fan of this movie. I didn't hate the one with Ashton Kutcher. I thought it did a nice job of telling the first half of the Steve Jobs story. And so here you're like, oh, okay, I want to I want to finish out you know, the thing that Jobs did and all these stuff, and let's see him invent the iPod. You're not really getting that with this movie. You're getting three scenes, and the scenes are him backstage about to give a huge presentation, 1984, 1988, and 1998. And so he's about to unveil this new product, and in those moments when he's backstage, he interacts with people from his past, from his present from his future and you see the way he handles his company the way he handles his personal life and it's a mesmerizing take on who this guy was the, the movie itself is egotistical it's brash because well, the Kutcher movie was where you're watching you're going you know what Steve Jobs was an a-hole and, and you feel like, that way you feel like, that way in this movie too yeah, yeah okay yeah. Yeah, right up until the time when I tweeted about it on my iPhone right after I got out of the screen <laughs> I love this guy. But the, I, the, the performances and the way it was directed it, it really really blew me away I thought it was masterful storytelling I really like Danny Boyle was the perfect person to execute um, Aaron Sorkin's script and you have that walk and talk style by Aaron Sorkin like West Wing and, yeah, and, it, and it works I mean it, it really works throughout. It, it's, it was such like Mark said it's such an inter- interesting choice that you just it's you learn things about his life but it's just between three events that happen and you're getting personal stuff you're getting stuff about his business and you, you never really ha- see him give the actual actual speeches you don't need to um, oh. they, now what I love they didn't I don't think that they pussyfooted around who he was as a person. Like you were saying, you heard he was an Mm -hmm. a-hole. They show that. They show the relationship with his daughter kind of... He he denied that he even had a daughter for the first like four or five years. He's like that's not my daughter, not my daughter, not my daughter. And then how important she ultimately became to him throughout his life. Um, I, I I was blown away by the movie. I loved it. I feel like cool. the viewer needs to be prepared a little bit though because you can't walk into this movie like Jurassic World, like oh sweet dinosaurs, you right, know, like right. this movie. You, it's you need to know that it's it's not really a biopic at all. Whatever it's, you do, you got to see Steve Jobs in right, 3D. Right. You got to see, see 3D. IMAX. Wait until he takes his <laughs> pants off, man. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. But the performances across the board are so good. It flies at you quick. Sometimes I thought it got a little too quick. It got a little too Aaron Sorkin dialogue-y for me, but the movie never takes a breath, never lets you as the viewer take a breath. And after you're driving home, you see this movie, it really hits you just like how cool of a film it was to experience. Nice. Uh, I guess his wife, uh, Lorene Jobs, who have been trying to kill this movie for a long time. Mm. Now, after you've seen it, do you understand why she was trying to kill no, it? No, I mean, look. It, it, so she called Leonardo DiCaprio and Christian Bale, who I guess were offered Steve yeah. Jobs, and said, "Please stay away from this movie." Like she was mm. making calls, and when Lorene Jobs calls well, you. I guess you pick up the your phone. Your iTunes account will be hacked. Yeah. <laughs> but I wonder though that she was trying to get it stopped while Sony had a hold of it because there was all that stuff happening with Sony that it was a mess, and there was all those when the email hacks oh, the happened, hacking, the yeah. recent Fincher walked away from it. So I'm curious if she was trying to get it stopped when they had it. I don't know if it continued on once uh, Universal got a hold of it, um, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I think because Walter I, I, uh, help me out with that name. I, Isaac's Isaac's son. Son. The word out. son of Isaac. Still drunk from Still Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he wrote, at, which I read, I read the, the biography, and it and which Jobs he sat down with them and talked through it, and I, I remember reading a lot of the stuff that they covered in the movie, so I don't know. I mean, it was pretty, I thought it was honest. It didn't seem like a lot of stuff was Fabricated. I yeah. wonder. I think I think Fassbender is probably going to get nominated for best actor. I think Jeff Daniels should get best supporting actor yeah. for something. If it's not for this, maybe for the Martian. But that guy deserves to be recognized at the award ceremonies. Kate Winslet is in Steve Jobs, and, mm-hmm. I, and I guess she doesn't allow her sons to have Apple products or iPhones oh, like wow. they're fourteen, twelve, and ten or something. She wants them to go outside and play and be boys and don't yeah. be all locked into the digital world. I love that. Uh, we were talking about earlier on the show. What was banned from your home as a child? So my, something weird that all the other kids could do, and your mom's like put her foot down. My about mom something. wouldn't let me watch Three's Company. That, that uh, came up yeah. earlier on the show. Yeah, That's she, so she funny. Would, but I snuck it anyway. I, <laughs> I, I, I still found a way to. to what do was it. her reasoning behind that? 
Too raunchy. Too raunchy? Yeah. Too raunchy. See, too raunchy. My house was kind of like, to bring back Pan, it was kind of like Never Neverland. Like, my house was the house that all the everybody else wanted to spend the night at because, like, my mom got Pop-Tarts and Toaster Strudels. We were <laughs> allowed to, to watch The Simpsons. You could choose. You could actually put Toaster Strudel frosting on Pop-Tarts, <laughs> oh. which was the best of both worlds. So oh. there, there weren't, like, it, we couldn't swear. No. We weren't allowed to swear for a long time. Until I was, like, 16, my sister went off to college, and then me and my brother got my parents in a corner. And we started making them laugh by swearing. And so they could, and we just broke, my brother and I lock eyes and we're like, oh, keep going. It's go time. <laughs> so my sister comes back from college to visit and to like eat a home cooked meal. And me and my brother just swearing like sailors <laughs> at the dinner table. Like, She's like, what the hell happened to my family? I've been gone six months. <laughs> Could you pass the F and P, sis? <laughs> Let's go. F- it's, like, uh-huh. it's, like the, it's like the R rated clumps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for coming in. So, so don't, don't see Pan, don't see Knock Knock, but definitely go see Steve Jobs. Are the suggestions, right? Yeah, I mean, we haven't seen Knock Knock, but we hear it smells. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. check out Christian's penis on YouTube. You, you <laughs> can see it eating YouTube. a goat I'm on so one of the videos. <laughs> you, yeah, you can watch all the videos on YouTube, youtube.com slash schmo no. All right, schmo no. Schmo no. I can't even say it. You're Shmo. still hungover, too. Oh, my well, Lord's killing me, dude. All right, we're going to take a break. Come back with Biggest Loser. We are Heidi and Frank. Back to more of the Heidi and Frank Show. Next, on the Rock of Southern California. 95.5 KLOS.